I want to welcome all of you who are here with us in person as well as those who are attending virtually. Uh, I think you're going to have a very insightful panel here. Obviously, uh, three of the most esteemed gentlemen who uh, have joined us today to discuss the issues related to business development and democracy. Uh, these three gentlemen have been what I would consider to be leaders, uh, leading the way, not just leaders of their countries, but leading the way in collaboration amongst each other, in their markets, in their geographies, as well as with the private sector. I'm Sherry Barambegi. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Price Mart. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, Price Mart is a uh, $4 billion company that trades on the NASDAQ. It's a bit of an anomaly in the sense that it is a US company, but virtually all of its activities, which are the sale of consumer goods and services, occur in Central America, in the Caribbean, and South America. So we have a substantial presence in the markets of all of these three gentlemen's countries. And uh, one of the main things that I would like to set as a, a sort of a context for this is how critical it is for the private sector to be able to have a good relationship with the leaders in these various countries, be able to rely on the rule of law, and also be able to identify opportunities where each of these countries have within their own cultures and their own economies, the ability for a private sector participant to not only support but draw upon the gems that their countries each offer, whether it's talent in a specific area or it's a famed product from their markets. We at PriceMart are now finding that we can identify opportunities to not only provide good products at great values to our members but, and provide great jobs at very good wages with health insurance for all, because that's part of who we are. But we're finding that we can also identify sources within these countries and invest in the development of products, invest in the infrastructure of product development that goes beyond just retail. And that allows us to nearshore. When you think about that in these countries, for us to be able to share the wealth and the expertise and the talents of the three different countries and trade amongst themselves, it can be good business, good for the environment, good for the labor force in these countries, create a good tax base, and also support our neighbors. So I'm very uh, honored to be here with these three esteemed presidents, and I'm going to go through one at a time here so that uh, you can all be familiar, but I need my glasses, so excuse me. All right, and you will find their, uh, you will find their very impressive resumes in uh, the materials that you have. So uh, here we have uh, President Luis Abinader. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Okay, the President of the Dominican Republic. And we also have with us, excuse me, uh, President Cortizo. Myself. And he claims to be the newest, right? No? no? The or we got the one from Costa Rica. Ah, okay. All right. So, and then we have uh, President Chavez from Costa Rica. And uh, as far as price mark goes, we've we've been in your markets for anywhere from almost 25 to 26 years ago, um, and we employ thousands of people in good-paying jobs and benefits, uh, and we also provide. Uh, wonderful opportunities for them to grow, given that we're in 13 different markets and they have upward mobility within the organization. Our mission is one that we've had even before this began, and that was to improve the lives and businesses of our members by delivering goods and services with great value at the lowest cost. And that's proven to be something that actually had 
uh, significant importance to the uh, people of the countries during COVID. So I'd now like to move on to some questions that I have for you individually. Um, let me see here, and the first is, gentlemen in the center, President Abinader, uh, in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic and a series of geopolitical shocks, the world is experiencing a wake-up call to the need to reconfigure global supply chains. What specific measures are the ad governments and the ad governments we're referring to is what has been created by the three of these coming together and deciding to work together to support one another in an effort to build democracy, democratic means of trade, as well as uh, growth, growth opportunities. What specific measures are the ad governments taking to confront the current global crisis and the transformation of supply chains and what actions can the international community take to help you achieve your objectives? Yeah, thank you. Uh, after the alliance, which is still we don't have one year and it has been extremely effective, we have been in permanent contact, the governments and also the private sector. The private sector has uh, had uh, several meetings uh, between uh, our businessmen from uh, Panama, Costa Rica, and Dominican Republic. And they have worked together and they have helped where we have uh, possibilities of export in this logistic crunch that we have all over the world in food, in industrial products. Uh, in any way we can help each other, we have been doing through the government, but also through the private sector. There is an increased communication between the private sector of each of our countries. At the same time, we work also with all the region, especially in the Dominican Republic, we have, we have opened all markets in order that we can have, and we can import several of the commodities that in food or in, uh, in other areas that you used to import from, uh, long-term destination throughout the Americas, and especially if uh, it can be supplied from any of our country, with, it has been done. So I think it has been an extremely uh, good collaboration. I cannot say that we, can, we could solve every of our logistic problem, okay. but it has mitigated some of the problem that we have encountered. And I think that will help mitigate more because the crisis is not over. The crisis is still, we don't know when it's going to finish and uh, we're gonna to work together to try to solve any of the problems that we had. So was it, the, uh, was it the pressure on supply chain and COVID and all of the challenges you were facing that motivated you to come together and try to support each other for more efficient solutions? I have to tell you that when we met on September on the a United Nations meeting in New York. And I think we have to speak about this with three. We never believed that this was gonna be so successful. We have to give credit to our, uh, each of our Minister of Foreign Affairs that could realize that each of our countries had a lot of similarities uh, in, in government and in private sector. So we met in a time that still we didn't have the crisis in, in Ukraine and Russia, and we expected to uh, the pandemic and the economic consequences of the pandemic was ending. Uh, we tried to, we came together to see the future, to, to see how we could work together for, uh, a, to try to have a better quality of life for each of our uh, countries and then started this new crisis of the uh, Ukraine and Russia. And we have worked together, we have made decisions together, uh, which has been much better, as I said, to mitigate it. So it was not exactly uh, for that, uh, even it, it helped us that crisis to come together. We wanted to see the future. And I believe this alliance is now really starting and it will go deeper in each part, not just on the economic, but also on education, on security, on uh, 
uh, social uh, actions, uh, fighting poverty, uh, I think it will come together to be deeper. Could I add something? Yes, please. please. Thank you very much. I would like to add a little bit about uh, what Luis just said. The alliance was created last September in New York. Correct. And basically, it has three areas that are very important. First of all, the area be, uh, around strengthening our democratic institutions. Not everyone could be part of the alliance. At this moment, only three. Costa Rica, Rep Republica Dominicana, Dominican Republic, and Panama. So the first one is how strong is your democratic institutions? That's very important. The second is address the needs of the people. And the third one, very important, is promote the relationship between the private sectors of three countries. Of the three countries, at this moment we are, at this moment we are only three. On that matter, for example, you mentioned a very important word, pressure on supply chain related to nearshoring. Panama, because of our geographical position, Panama has the best connectivity, maritime, air, digital, and logistical connectivity in Latin America and the Caribbean, the best. Our logistical platform through the Panama Canal connects 180 routes in the world. It also connects, connects 1920 ports in 170 countries. So when you, wait, when you are talking about supply chain, and when you are talking about nearshoring, the place to be is Panama, and we are part of that alliance. Yes. So in that case, that's one of the advantages that we have compared to our two other countries. However, they do have other yes. advantages that we as Panamanian could take advantage of. So Panama brings to the table uh, an, Connectivity. Es an established infrastructure for that kind of global connectivity. That's correct. And regional. But we're also hearing about more that other countries are doing. And for example, I know that our company has a regional distribution center in Costa Rica. Yes. So I'd like to hear from you, President Chavez. Um, Thank you very much, Sherry. Thank you to my fellow okay. presidents. Uh, let me start with the ADD itself. Okay. I don't need to tell uh, business people that consumers today not only care what they buy in terms of the quality of the service, but they do care where is it produced, child labor, not child labor, what type of values are they endorsing with their dollar. That is a trend that you know better than I, it's going to continue increasing. And then you have three countries here, and I, I cannot take any of the blame or the credit for forming this alliance. I have been, uh, I'm the youngest kid in the block, I've been president one month. But what I do believe here is that the unique value proposition beyond what we can individually say is to tell you that there are three small, relatively small countries, but extremely important who have democracies, who have respect for human rights. My cabinet is fully, there is full parity between men and women. In Costa Rica, by law, we have to have half representation of females in our Congress, and we embrace the law. We got rid of that little thing that some other countries call an army and an air force and so on to invest in people. We have a long running democracy 
And at the same time, we have reverse, totally deforestation, the only tropical country in the world. And we actually double forest coverage in Costa Rica and 100% in practical terms of our matrix of electricity generation is renewable. So instead, the be I think it was Gandhi who said, the best way to imagine the future is building it. You have three presidents basically committed to those values, building a future for their people on the basis of those values, but also understanding that no society in the world has ever achieved prosperity without a vibrant, innovative, productive private sector that is allowed to operate free of corruption and without corrupting, and at the same time, a government that provides <coughs> the services that the private sector needs to generate value. Today, in an increasingly focused, uh, today in an environment where societies and consumers are increasingly focused on the values. So you talk about nearshoring, I would like to think about friendshoring timetable, we are closed, the three of us are within the hemisphere, uh, short travel, unlikely disruptions to connectivity between the three of us, and the like. So I think that together, and I, I wouldn't want to monopolize too much, together and individually, we offer a very good value proposition of skills, of rule of law, democracy, human rights, values. They say in America, in a different context, birds of a feather flock together. I think that's how you <coughs> say it, right? Well, we are birds of a very good feather flocking together to provide an environment and an ecosystem where foreign, foreign direct investment and trade will flourish. Thank you. Sorry for it. No, no, and, and from, a, from the private sector's perspective, transparency in the rule of law, reliability in a government that uh, respects democracy, that uh, is intentional about equality and fairness and social justice, uh, we're all held accountable, no matter what our role. Uh, this is a time, I believe, in the world where we each have a part to play. But the foundation for this are countries that believe in democracy and equity, fairness, and the human spirit, mm -hmm. and are willing to uh, work towards establishing an environment where private companies can come in and invest for, for development for the future and, and allow more opportunities for self-actualization of the people in each of these countries. Which I'm now going to go to you, uh, President uh, Cortizo. Could you please tell me, uh, in April, Panama convened a ministerial meeting on migration. That's correct. An expressed aim of the new Alliance for Development and Democracy is to mitigate irregular migration by tackling its root causes. This is part of the stated agenda of, of Vice President Harris. Uh, how, do you, how do these two initiatives address emerging political and economic threats that could spur further migration? Okay, that's a, that's a very good question. Both initiatives, the one that we had in Panama in April that uh, convened Minister of Foreign Affairs from the region also Minister of Security and Director of Mi Migration, including Secretary of State Blinken yes. and uh, Homeland Security, Mallorca. They were in Panama. Both initiative, I'm talking about the regional in initiative and the Alliance initiative, they go hand in hand. And let me explain this because this is a very important issue right now. 
there is a, we have a short term and a long term uh, actions. In the, in the short term, what we need in the region is to slow down, slow down the flow right. of a lot of irregular mi migrants. We have to slow down. And this is not only an issue of three countries. Right. It is very tough in Panama. It is tougher in the Dominican Republic because of the Haiti is right next to Dominican Republic. And it's very tough in Costa Rica. In Panama, for example, in a regular year, around 10,000 people get across Panama. Right now, 140,000. So in the short term is how to control, diminish that flow that goes to the north. Yes. But in the long term, that's another issue that needs a, a commitment yes. of all the countries and a huge commitment of the United States of America. When I say a huge commitment, is that a lot of communications are very important. You are going to have from this uh, uh, meeting, uh, this summit, you are going to have a lot of good speeches. And at, at the end, there is going to be a, a written statement, beautiful. How can we execute? How can we get the things that we said in reality? For example, the roots. And we do have a working group now, in which the US is part of it, to get into the roots, just think for a minute. What goes in the mind of a family, of a mother, of a farm worker, from Ecuador, Nicaragua, Mexico? What goes in the mind, Colombia, Venezuela, to one day take a decision to leave your country and say, I am going to go up north. And they have to go through different countries, including the, an area called Darien, that's in Panama, that's a hostile jungle, humid jungle, in which I'm not going to say many, but a lot of people die crossing that jungle. So what are those roots? What makes them take that decision? It's a very good question. Yes, but and that question is, we have to begin answering it. That question means lack of economic opportunities. Right. And if you don't want to have in Rio Grande or in Texas a lot of irregular migrants, it is better to begin thinking in good programs, and this, this is, it will take time, good programs that could people in those countries would have a hope to have a better life. That's not the only thing, because we could get into other things that ha are in the region. Right. I'm not going to get into other things because I have two other friends that they are going to, they are looking at me right now and I don't like the looks of them. So you can see it from the back of your head yeah. over here. You're looking at so me. So there are two, two, two ways, short, short term, term and yeah. the long term. Absolutely. And it's interesting because after I attended the, the first, well, one of the earlier meetings for the call to action with Vice President Harris, and she described, you know, what, what people go through. And we all know, you know, it's, it's a heart-wrenching decision for a person to leave their family, yep. especially in cultures where multi-generational bonds exist and, and the culture is such that to depart and not know when they're going to see their, 
loved one, including a spouse or a child, those decisions can't be made lightly unless, and, and I'll include the second part that you didn't want to talk about right now, but the first being lack of economic opportunity and the second, if, if they're in fear for their lives and they, have, they feel they need to leave in order to be safe, both of which are very important. But I'd like to just talk about the first. After that meeting, I mean, it made complete sense to me, but when I went back into the countries and walked the floors and talked to our country managers and our club managers and our people, I asked, are any of you aware of anyone who has left or left our, our company, changed jobs, or, and then ended up no. leaving? And they said, absolutely not. We have over 9,000 employees. We pay above market wages. We provide all sorts of insurance. They're in a safe working environment and many of them use that to support their entire family. They get upward mobility. Of They're course. in a clean and safe environment. So even that alone is sort of a, an affirmation that with the right opportunities, mm -hmm. this sense of desperation could be stemmed. So I'm going to move on Let to a very... something. Okay. I'm looking to that. Uh, yeah, we're well, over. <laughs> Is that the only time that we have? Uh, really? Yeah, except we could do a very quick uh, question, unless there's something you really <laughs> want to say. Oh, let them talk, but uh, I mean, <laughs> it, has, it has only 25 seconds. <laughs> no, no, it, it, that's the overdraft. That, now we're already in, oh, no. <laughs> You're already overdrafted. <laughs> but I'm no, sure so we, we will be able to have some quick closing video. comments. So let me, uh, let me get us back on track here. <laughs> and this is for all of you. We'll do sort of a lightning round, okay? okay. Uh, and the question for all of you is, the Alliance for Development in Democracy is based on the proposition that democracy and development are mutually reinforcing. That democracy and the rule of law create favorable conditions for investment and growth. And that equitable, sustainable growth legitimizes and stabilizes democracy. So there's sort of a self-reinforcing cycle of success. <laughs> Please tell us more about how you plan to partner individually and collectively with the private sector to carry out the vision and goals of the Alliance for Development in Democracy. So why don't we start oh, with you? No. Uh, Thank I, you. I just Have an hour. want to, to add this alliance started so strong that there was a change of government in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And Rodrigo is as committed as the former president uh, in, this, uh, in this alliance. And, and he has shown, and we had, he has, as I said, as he said, one month in office, and we have met three times uh, with this. So this alliance is so strong that it's gonna pass, my presidency is gonna pass NATO's presidency because we have so much in common. We have so much in common in democracy. We have so much in common in the respect, in the respect of law. We have so much in common in transparency. We have so much in common also on the vision that any society will develop if there is an understanding, if there is an unique criteria for the development plan between the private sector and the public sector. If you, and this I always repeat in my country, if you see the history of economic development from uh, centuries, you will see that where countries develop is where you have that unique objective between the production, agricultural or industrial, now in the service and technology, and the public sector. We have to go together. We have to discuss the problem together. We have to look for solutions together. And that's something that we have between the three of us. And that's why our people, our businessmen who are here from Dominican Republic, from Costa Rica, and from Panama, they have come together. They are doing joint ventures. We have seen what has been working in Costa Rica so we can do together. We have seen what is working in uh, Panama to do it together. Costa Rica has several uh, uh, examples to follow up 
In tourism, we have examples to follow up. In free zones, we have examples to follow up. In free zones, Costa Rica has. In logistic, they have a, a Panama have a special uh, uh, position in the world that we have is it's, and now in this in this crisis is fundamental. So, and finally, we have also this alliance help us to have what they call the mirror effect. So, if we have a democracy, we have to to keep that democracy, to keep the respect of law, because we see on the mirror of Costa Rica, we see on the mirror of Panama. So we will always try to do better than that. And you will all, you will all be holding each other to a very high standard, yes, I'm yeah. sure. So, uh, President, uh, Chavez. President Chavez, could you briefly address the same question here? Absolutely, and very briefly. My grandmother, wise lady, said to me, who cares if there is candy in hell? And right. frankly, nice. <laughs> what we're looking at is a balanced development with shared, with shared prosperity. That's the type of society that the three of us want for our people. And that requires, as I said, a fair share of collaboration between the public sector serving our citizens and serving the private sector to generate wealth. And the state ensuring that the rules of the game are fair. You have seen what has happened in the global Hi. geopolitical situation. The great moderation of the early 2000s led to an increasing growth without precedent maybe just prior to World War I. However, there was a political backlash. All uh, a rising tide, tide lifts all boats. Right. But this rising tide lifted this boat this much and mine this much. And it created a backlash that we are seeing all over the world. So we do believe that while respecting property rights, we need to ensure that this growth is inclusive, is democratic, is sustainable. And that's what we're doing. Costa Rica, we are, and, and, and this is my last speech, and I, I, I okay. will, uh, give you the, the order to my ministers is foreign direct investors should face no red tape whatsoever. Instead, a beautiful red carpet. Wonderful. Music why? to my ears. <laughs> no, why? Win win. Absolutely. That's the only way to advance in a country that has external imbalances and need to import capital. I can finance that through portfolio investments, mm -hmm. which make me a little bit vulnerable. For all my sins, I'm an economist, and I'm sorry for that. Or I can finance it as a country, and so can Luis and Mito, with direct for, foreign direct investment, with all the increases in productivity, knowledge transfer, uh, and so on. So that's the win-win. The private sector is going to be fundamental. We will support it, and we expect them to play by the rules. Thank you, President Chavez. I'd like okay. to wrap it up with you. Fine. He said, I'm going President to go with a, like an example. Okay. But first of all, I'm going to use one word. That word is trust. Yes. Spanish is confianza. To have a, a country that... Uh, have good investment, not any type of investment, good, the over the table investment, not under the table investment, good investment, you need to have trust. Yes. Panama is the regional home of 181 multinational headquarters. 181 multinational headquarters decided that the regional headquarter was, is in Panama. Why? The word is trust. What kind of multinational? For example, I'm going to have two or three. Procter & Gamble, Samsung, Caterpillar, so many, 181. Matter of fact, here in this auditorium, I could see to my left, a Dominican Republic investor that is building in Panama 
a gas plant, and this investment is over a billion dollars. He started about two months ago. I have seen here businessmen from Costa Rica that they are doing business in Panama. I could see in front of me the ex-president of the Chamber of Commerce of Panama. He met with myself and my minister any time he wanted. And he knows, he's right in front of me, that he has my private phone number as well as many investors in Panama. When I say my private phone number is my phone number, the one that I... You can announce it right here? Or you I'm not going to announce it, but I'm not going to announce it, but, it's, <laughs> but they know that they could call President Cortizo, and President Cortizo in one, two, or three days is the one that answer. So trust. We, as Dominican Republic, as uh, Costa Rica, we are a country that know that's common sense that is through private sector, that is through good investment, foreign direct investment, local investment, that they are going to produce employment. And one employment is one headache less for the government. So in that case, our alliance, what it sends to the region, to the world, is trust this alliance. We do one good investment for our region. President Cortez, so thank you for those comments. Uh, I'd like to thank each and every thank one you. of you. These have been uh, such a demonstration of solidarity, all based on, on true core values. Uh, we can see the collaboration and the priority that at least from a U.S. business perspective, that's exactly what we'd like to see so that we can to grow in these regions. I'm very excited about the future. Uh, my, my goal would be to see us being able to uh, develop and celebrate and highlight the other industries and other production opportunities that are inherent to your region and that we can create together a more stabilized, uniform, integrated, win-win relationship amongst this group of countries as well as uh, with the private sector. Thank so uh, thank you for your time thank here. You. It's wonderful to see all three of you on the stage and you've received so many accolades so far and recognition from uh, U.S. senior uh, government officials and private sector appreciating the fact that you've taken the lead. You've taken the lead and I think the private sector is uh, waiting with bated breath, not just waiting, participating, but really anxious to see how we can do more in this region because it'll serve all of us. Thank we you. have a unified interest. And I'd like to make a quick announcement uh, that if you'd like to learn more about AD and its private sector arm, the AD US, USA Business Council will be hosting a reception this afternoon at uh, 3.30 p.m. in the Westin Hotel. Now, I bet you it's gonna be later because be we later. went over. <laughs> but it was worth it, right? Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Thank you.